From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tonight on the American Agenda, when the backyard becomes the world. In the 20 years between the first Earth Day and Earth Day this Sunday, that is the biggest change in perceptions about the environment. In 1970, people worried about a single dam or that smokestack they could see from the back porch. Today, there's a growing realization that the whole world is at risk. On the subject of extinction, here's ABC's Barry Serafin. In the conflict between man and plants and animals, plants and animals are still losing. A for sale sign on a patch of desert outside of Tucson, Arizona means development is on the way and animals are on their way out. Throughout much of the Southwest, the desert tortoise was recently added to the federal government's list of threatened species, but it is not yet protected here in the Sonoran Desert. So when developers move in, so does Candy Grunewald. With state permission, she relocates the tortoises placing them in homes and museums, saving their lives, but ending their days in the wild. Scientists consider these populations uh, biologically dead. They know that this is slated for development and they can't really do anything about it. Such conflicts are not limited to the desert or even the U.S. mainland. An urgent struggle for survival is underway in Hawaii. About 27% of all of the rare and endangered birds and plants in the United States are found in Hawaii. Half of Hawaii's 140 unique bird species have already vanished, and one-third of those that remain are endangered because of development and the introduction of non-native plants and animals. Sugarcane production, for example, has pushed the nene, the state bird, from much of its habitat. Only 300 are left in the wild. The banana polka vine brought from South America for its edible fruit has already swallowed up more than 70,000 acres of Hawaiian rainforest threatening dozens of native species, including plants which have shown the potential for fighting molds and even cancer. Each one of these species represent really a lot of important information for mankind. To lose a place like this forest here at Waikamoi would be like throwing a whole library of books out without ever reading them. There is some good news. In its 17 years, the Endangered Species Act has produced some success stories. Banning the use of DDT, for example, has helped to more than quadruple the number of bald eagles and spurred the recovery of peregrine falcons, ospreys, and other species. A few red wolves have been carefully reintroduced into the wild. Other endangered populations are kept alive, but only in captivity. About 30 condors, for example, and 125 black-footed ferrets. There are now nearly 1,100 species on the threatened and endangered list, but more than 3,000 might also qualify. The government adds only 50 to 60 species for protection and recovery plans each year. Limited manpower and budgets are part of the reason. Critics also blame a lack of political will. These uh, decisions involving the Endangered Species Act uh, often, often have great ramifications politically and uh, economically and socially. Adding a name involves hard choices. From the snail darter, the small fish that temporarily blocked construction of a dam in the 70s, to the possible listing this summer of the spotted owl, which could mean the loss of logging jobs in the Pacific Northwest. There is widespread agreement that we need more research, more information on which to base the hard choices. Many now believe we need new approaches, marking whole groups of species and whole habitats for survival. There are growing warnings that we cannot avoid or put off the difficult choices. One of the most alarming and mysterious warnings is the disappearance here and around the world of hundreds of thousands of populations of frogs. No one is sure why they are vanishing, but scientists suspect habitat loss, acid rain, and water pollution. Scientists say the frog deaths are a chilling symptom of something gone wrong in our global environment. We are going to see more extinctions in our lifetime than have occurred on Earth since man appeared on Earth. The frogs, Wake says, are like the proverbial canary in a coal mine, warning miners when the air turns poisonous, but... When the canary died, the coal miner left the mine. Where do we have to go? At worst, allowing species to disappear could, like pulling threads from a tapestry, one day endanger us. At best, it would leave our world a poorer and lonelier place. Barry Seraph and ABC News, Tucson, Arizona.
presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.